my name is Jenny Lynn and this is my channel and today we're going to pick the subject for the next painting. now because there's only two left. Let's see. Who's it gonna be? It is going to be Harriet Tubman. Awesome. That's a really good one. It's a really, really good one. And Harriet Tubman is going to be hanging out with a goat. Harriet Tubman and a goat. Oh, pretty weird. All right, I'm gonna get started. For today's little art tip, I'm going to talk to you about shading, specifically shadows in artwork. So I got a painting up here that I did. Um, I think it was what, 2018 I did this painting. And I actually photographed certain elements of this myself. So still life is a really good way to practice shading. And in this particular one, I had a wine bottle and an apple and a flower. And there were certain elements to this that I actually added after the fact. The bullet going through the fruit in the bee are things that I added. In order to create a really good optical illusion, you have to understand shadow. Shadow always has a tendency in optical illusions, which that's pretty much what we're doing here is we're creating the illusion that there is something that has shape on a flat surface. So it's all like magic, art is like magic in that way. And dark colors recede. So if you remember that, dark colors have a tendency to optically seem to move back into the distance that will definitely help you if you're starting out as an artist. So in this particular artwork, the light source is approximately right here. And so that will create shadows underneath. And if you look along the bottle here, you will see use of actual very dark color. And in this particular piece, there actually are no true blacks. 
I actually used an extremely dark, dark blue. So it isn't completely black. It's actually a very, very dark blue. It looks almost black and our eyes might play tricks on us in mixing color together and it will say, oh, I believe that's actually black. But if you put actual true black up against it, you will notice that it is actually not truly black. So that's a little thing that I personally like to do as an artist is use colors that are close to black but not truly black. And in creating reflections, you will have a lot of different mid-tones, which are colors that aren't quite shadows, they aren't quite highlights, but they actually fall in the middle somewhere. You can see that all throughout the bottle. And in the apple, to create the illusion that it's actually curved, I used you know shadows along the bottom, and I created some shadow here at the top coming in. So in order to get a really good illusion that something is round, you usually will have shadow areas that blend up into highlighted areas. And a really good way to practice spheres is to actually just draw a sphere and practice your shading, practice your shading, practice your shading, and just keep practicing. And there's several different ways that you can shade, whether it be with pencil or with paint. There's a lot of different methods, but I particularly like to use both like a smooth shading and I also like to use stippling. So in this apple, you'll notice that there's some stippling type texture that was used, a little bit of smooth texture in places, but mostly stippling. So that's a very good example of that. And then also in the little B, you'll notice that there is a little bit of smooth shading but there's also a slight bit of stippling up in the fuzzy bits of the bee to give the illusion that he's got a little bit of a roundness to him. So there you go. Hope you guys learned something. Keep on watching. amazingly cool facts about goats. So goats have square pupils and that actually allows them to see 320 to 340 degrees without moving. So that helps them avoid predators super super well and goats turns out they actually really need friends they are a herd animal and if they are alone they can get really really depressed and sad so it is good if you have goats for them to actually have friends and apparently the last thing which i did not know was that goats helped discover coffee so there were, I guess there were some herders and they had a bunch of goats and these goats were eating coffee beans and the herders noticed that after the goats ate the coffee beans, they got super energetic. So if you love coffee, you're gonna have to thank a goat. All right guys, I hope you learned something. Keep on watching.
again, it is time for one of my favorite segments, and that is, what in the heck is Jenny eating? And today I'm going to pick another piece of candy from my bag from Mexico. I'm going to try to go all the way to the bottom. And it's going to be, if I can get a hold of it. This. It is Lucas Salsa Getty. So I'm going to assume that this is, it's another hot candy. Watermelon flavored hot candy, tamarind flavored sauce. Hmm, but it looks like actual spaghetti in the package. Let's see if I can get it open so you can see. Oh my. So it's like it's like a little spaghetti kit. So apparently it comes with enchilada flavored hot liquid candy. Oh my goodness. There's the spaghetti, and this is the hot sauce. I got a feeling I'm gonna need a paper towel for this one. I gotta mix these together, and I'm gonna use my hands like an animal. Mm. It smells a little warm, but yeah, I'm just gonna dump it. Mexico, you like to make me cry. Mm. Oh, it's a little sour. <laughs> it's a little bit sour. It's a little bit warm. <laughs> it's just the weirdest stuff ever sour and hot at the same time so <laughs> it's like getting a packet of hot sauce from like Taco Bell or somewhere and then putting it on like sour worms and eating it that's what this is like it's weird <laughs> ah it's like so weird whenever I eat sour stuff like I get pangs on the side of my mouth like, you know, I like it. I like that sensation, but it's like you get this, you get the weird pangs of sour where you're like, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, and then you get the hot at the same time. It's a totally new experience for me. I'm trying to take it in pieces, but maybe I just need to throw this whole thing in my mouth. Okay, okay. I'm just gonna stuff the rest in my gob here. <laughs> Sweating a little. I your water in a little. It's a little warm. It wasn't bad, but I'm going to definitely rate it low. And I absolutely don't like that packaging where you just kind of mash it all and you're getting it everywhere. Not really my bag, so I'm only going to do a two out of five. Ooh, it's very, very strange. But hey, if you like messy and you like hot and sour at the very same time, it's probably one you should try. But I, meh. That's probably first and last for me. All right, guys, keep on watching.
tell you a little bit more about this particular piece of artwork. So I wanted to do something that was very symbolic with this particular piece. It's Ter uh, Harriet Tubman and a goat. Um, and when I selected those two subjects, I was like, what am I going to do with this? Like, I wasn't really sure. And it was kind of hard. It took me a little while to sort out, you know, sometimes things come to me very quickly. I have really great ideas. And then other times I really, really, really think about it. So I went through and I started, you know, reading a little bit more about her life, you know, digging a little deeper. And I came to the conclusion, I mean, it's just a guess, an educated guess, I guess you could say. Um, like someone that had as much compassion as she did, I would imagine that she probably also was very compassionate when it came down to animals as well. So I said, well, perhaps I can do something where she's, you know, protecting a baby goat or, you know, shielding it from harm or rescuing it or doing something like that. So that's what I decided to go ahead and do is I have her protecting being a very, you know, mothering figure with this little baby goat. And it's also kind of cute in a sense. And then I also have some chains here that are broken. So, you know, that's very symbolic of her life's work and everything that she had been through. And if you don't know her story, you know, definitely check it out. I know that there's, I'm pretty sure there was a movie that came out recently about her. So I haven't seen it yet, but I should, should probably watch it but if you you know read about her story she did so many crazy things I can't even imagine I try my best but <laughs> it's one heck of a life and you know her legacy is amazing so I wanted to do something that was you know highly symbolic of her um, uh, of her life and her expression she's got a very serious very serious expression she's got you know, that I've kind of, you know, that I've been through a lot of crap in my lifetime expression. But she's also kind of got that, don't you dare mess with this baby Go, you know, don't you dare mess with me, don't you dare kind of thing going on. So I thought that was very fitting. It's a, a very stark background because I wanted just the focus to be, you know, solely on her in the little goat. And I did her a lot of the pictures you see she's wearing like a head wrap type thing so I, I gave her that and I used you know my watercolor set I did a little bit of ink in this just a slight bit of inking and I used a little bit of my watercolor pencils and I used a little bit of just regular colored pencils as well to give a little bit of texture and you know add into the shading you know I am really happy with with uh, the texture that I achieve with adding the pencil on top of the paint. So there you go. Keep on watching. Thank you so much for watching. I, I really am so grateful that you've been keeping up with me as I go. And Katie Apuri really appreciates it too because she's a diva. Let's see. Hey, the camera's that way. Look over there. <laughs> Aww. Are you a good girl? Yeah, she's a good girl. Aww. <laughs> Say hi to the people. Oh, okay. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you would, please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and check out all of my links in the description box below. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.